Hi there, welcome to the webinar and thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Olivia Lim and this is Dr. Surya Fabri. We are both from the Animal and Veterinary Service and Dr. Surya will be telling us more about the common skin diseases in dogs today. At any time, feel free to send over your questions in the comments section and we'll answer them later. If we do not manage to answer any of the questions by the end of the webinar, don't worry, we'll get back to you shortly after. So, Surya, whenever you're ready, please. Great. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction, Olivia. So, uh, just to tell you a little bit more about myself, uh, my name is Surya. I am a veterinarian, um, and I, before I started working at ABS, I was in private practice for a couple of years. So, for the purpose of today's webinar, I'll be talking about the most common skin diseases that we see in dogs. And it is something that we would see very frequently on a day-to-day -day, uh, consult with a lot of clients coming in with skin being their main issue. All right, so let's dive right in. Okay. So for today's um, webinar, I'll be talking to you about the common skin diseases in dogs. I just want to mention that this is not an exhaustive list of skin diseases. There are a lot more complicated skin diseases that do require different diagnostic tests and workups. And a lot of time when you can't get to the bottom of this, you may consider consulting a veterinary dermatologist that is a specialist in the field on that. So out of today's webinar, what I'm hoping uh, the audience gets out of this um, would be to get an overview of the most common skin conditions that occur in dogs, an understanding of the necessity of diagnostic tests. I know in clinic, a lot of the time you're wondering, like, what is your veterinarian doing at the back? Or why do I even need this? So I hope to provide some insight on what the necessity of the different tests are and what they can reveal to your veterinarian in the process of a diagnostic workup. So then, uh, I'll also be covering the importance of sticking to a very strict <laughs> regimen when treating your dog. And yes, it's true, e, no matter how cute your dog is, you have to be the strong person here. And finally, some simple do's and don'ts when treating your pet in relation to different skin conditions. So, let's jump in. The first thing that we need to do before understanding how to diagnose an itchy skin condition is to understand why dogs itch. So the dog's, um, the dog's microbiome or the surface of the skin is, con is comprised of very different, apologies. <laughs> the surface of your dog's skin is comprised of a lot of different um, uh, microorganisms. And these include demodex, which is a type of parasite, malassezia, which is a type of yeast, as well as different types of bacteria. In low and balanced concentrations, this is something that helps protect your pet from external environment. So it helps to improve your, pet, improve your pet's fur coat. And, um, and these are all different components that make up a healthy skin microbiome. So just to dive in a little bit more, Demodex is a mite that buries in the, in the, in the hair follicles of your pets. Malassezia is a type of yeast that does exist on the skin of very healthy animals, as well as bacteria. Okay? So... Um, one of the key things to mention here is that while they all do exist on the, the, the skin and the coat of healthy animals, when you do have a allergic skin condition or some sort of inciting factor, these different things like parasites, malassezia, as well as bacteria can overgrow, resulting in itchy skin condition. So let's go through the cascade of events that, res that results in your dog itching. The first is to cover the fact that there will be something that triggers it. So the trigger uh, could be something like dust mites, parasites, or even um, different allergens in the air. Um, release specific inflammatory mediators within your pet skin. And this mediator then causes dilation of your blood vessels, which results in the, the, the red patchiness that you often see in allergic skin conditions. And it also activates tiny little nerve receptor endings that you see that is buried in your dog's skin. These nerve receptor endings, when they are activated, then trace back up to your dog's brain to tell them, hey, we're really itchy, please scratch here. So that's how you, that's, that's the, the pathway in which um, an external allergen can then ultimately result in an itchy dog. Okay. So the first part of a diagnostic process is to understand the triggers. So what triggers your skin to be itchy or your pet skin? <laughs> So being a veterinarian is a lot like being a detective. When you bring your dog to a veterinarian, the first thing that they're going to do is try to get an understanding of your pet's uh, household environment, the diet that you're feeding your pet, as well as any changes in your household. 
while this all may seem like a, a series of very random questions and you're probably wondering why your vet is being so nosy, the truth is it's actually a process of deductive reasoning. So your veterinarian is trying to rule in or out certain factors that contribute to your dog's current skin condition. A lot of the time they start with the easiest one to diagnose, so those are ectoparasites, and then will gradually work their way towards more complicated conditions such as allergies. One of the things that I'd like to mention here while we're going through this is that this process can be tricky and it does require multiple visits to the vet. Occasionally medication may work or may not work and sometimes you may end up with multiple different conditions or different causes of itch on your dog at the same time. So we'll start with the easiest one to rule out and that is ectoparasites. So ectoparasites, essentially in the word, means external parasites. So these are very small insects that can be crawling on your dog's coat, and they cause itch in two ways. The first one being their physical presence. So they're crawling all over your pet, they're biting, and it does cause it to be a little bit itchy wherever they're crawling over. And the second one that is less commonly understood is allergic stimulation. So when you do have an ectoparasite, like a tick or a flea, that's crawling all over your pet, but it then bites your pet and deposits a little bit of saliva, your pet's itch is actually reacting to the allergic stimulation from the parasite saliva. Okay. So ectoparasites, essentially we've, uh, the broad category of, of what they are include ticks, fleas, mites, and lice. And when you bring your dog in for a veterinary consult, your veterinarian may opt to do one of these few things. So a visual examination to look through the coat to see any parasites that can be visibly seen with the naked eye. These, tends, these tend to be bigger parasites like uh, ticks or fleas. However, there are some microparasites that you may not necessarily be able to pick up with the naked eye, which is why uh, diagnostic tests are incredibly important for this. And in that case, your veterinarian may opt to do a hair pluck to examine for mites at the base of hair follicles, uh, tape prep, or even a skin scrape. So these are more to pick up parasites that are buried within your dog's uh, skin. And finally, if your veterinarian does end up diagnosing an ectoparasitic infestation, it's quite a straightforward uh, treatment process in which they can either choose to, to put you on oral or topical antiparasitic medication. Okay. So the key learning points that I'd like you to take home from this is that ectoparasites can cause itch even though you may not necessarily see them. So if they are microscopic, you will never know whether or not your dog is being affected by it unless you put them on a preventative medication. Diagnostic tests such as uh, skin scrapes and, it, uh, and, it, um, and hair plucks are important to diagnose these conditions. And the only way that your veterinarian can surely say that they'd like, they would be able to rule out ectoparasites from your itchy dog's workup is by knowing that you are on a preventative medication. Okay, so next we'll be talking a little bit more about infectious agents. Infectious agents tend to take the shape of either bacterial or fungal infectious agents. And these are different agents that cause skin, uh, that cause itch that you need to be particularly careful when dealing with as they can be transmitted to, hu to humans. Not in all cases, but in some cases. And during your veterinary diagnostic workup, your veterinarian will advise you if you are dealing with an infectious agent that could potentially be transmitted to you. They test for it generally by doing a tape prep or an impression smear. And if you are seeing recurrent infections and your vet is suspecting a bacterial infection, they may opt to suggest a culture and sensitivity testing. For fungal infections, the options are uh, either a fungal culture or a woodland lamps test. And both of these are important to be able to isolate and grow the pathogen so that we can treat it very, um, treat the, the, the pathogen specifically. And so for treatment, um, the options are antibiotics or antifungals. So depending on what your veterinarian uh, discovers in the process of the diagnostic workup, they may recommend either or. So as part of the key learning points, it's important to note that culture and sensitivity testing is a very important um, method to, to identify the type of bacteria that you're dealing with and target the treatment of it. Make sure to closely follow your veterinarian's uh, dosing instructions and treatment regimes when treating your pet with antibiotics and antifungals for two reasons. 
these are not just random timings that may be um, recommended by your veterinarians, but in fact, different medications work in different ways. So by following it closely, you'll have the best chance of recovery for your pet. Do not abruptly stop antibiotics if you are seeing an improvement. Because these are microorganisms, you may not necessarily be able to tell if the infection has been completely resolved by just looking at your dog. So the best course and to prevent the, uh, the growth of resistant bacteria is to complete the full course of antibiotics. And finally, as I previously mentioned, it's important to note that some of these um, infectious agents can pass to humans. So when you are dealing with a pet that has an infectious agent on its skin, it's really crucial to maintain good hygiene around your pet um, before and after dealing with it, and also ensuring that you clean your pet's living area. And finally, we move on to a little bit, well, the more complicated end of the itchy dog um, issue. So allergies, what are they? So there's three main different classifications of allergies that we look at as veterinarians. The first one being food allergies, uh, which are allergens, uh, which is an allergy that occurs when your dog ingests something and that causes the itchy skin condition. Contact dermatitis is when your dog is allergic to something in its physical environment. So perhaps um, contact with grass or a leash. Um, and finally, environmental allergies, which a lot of the time is classified as atopic dermatitis. Environmental allergens are things like dust, um, ant, dander in the environment, different types of pollens. So these tend to be more difficult to treat and diagnose, and it will take several visits to your veterinarian um, to get down to the bottom of it. So when dealing with allergies, the first thing that your veterinarian will recommend that you do is to put your, your pet on a food trial. A food trial is essentially a restricted diet uh, for your, your pet that ensures that there's nothing that your pet that is in, ingesting that triggers an allergic reaction. This food trial can be conducted two ways. So it can either be home cooked on novel protein, which is a protein your, your animal has never been exposed to, such as kangaroo meat or deer meat, or you can buy commercial bought hydrolyzed diets, which essentially are diets in where the protein or the allergen has been broken down so it doesn't cause an allergic reaction. Food trials can take excessively long, um, especially because we don't expect to see an improvement immediately. Your veterinarian may recommend that you stay on a very strict food trial for at least eight weeks, and that does mean that your pet will not be even given a tiny morsel of, of food outside of the diet, so no snacks, no treats. And in my experience, I think that food trials tend to be a little bit more challenging to stick to, especially um, if you're used to giving your pet treats. The next thing, uh, once food has been ruled out, is your veterinarian may look at the distribution pattern of your pet's skin. So if they are seeing rashes where your pet has perhaps been lying or rolling in the grass or under the collar, it could indicate contact dermatitis um, as a potential cause for the itch. And finally, one of the other methods that veterinarians consider in terms of um, confirming a diagnosis if they are suspecting an allergy is intradermal skin testing or a blood test. And these are things to confirm the presence of environmental allergens or food-based allergens. So how do we treat it? Uh, the first step would be to eliminate the trigger. So once we have some sort of inclination to what would be causing the allergy, we would try to remove it from your pet's diet. If, that is, if that's not successful, and in many cases, allergies are very complicated to treat, you can consider going down the route of doing a test and then sensitizing your dog to the allergen by taking on board things like immunotherapy, which is where you get your, your pet used to whatever's causing the itch. And finally, it's important that throughout the duration of your dog's itchy skin condition, that you treat it symptomatically with itch relief medication and this is something that your veterinarian can recommend to you because there are a huge variety of different types of symptomatic reliefs on the market. So the key learning points to take home from this is that diet trials, <laughs> the reality of it is they are really long, so um, at least a minimum of eight weeks, and um, you have to be very strict with your pet on this. So no, no additional snacks, no table scraps, nothing like that. A really good tip when you are keeping your pet on a diet trial is to 
is to keep a journal. And a journal will allow you to track closely what changes in terms of the frequency of your pet's itch, whether or not there actually has been any improvement in the itch, um, and whether there are certain things that exacerbate your pet skin condition. So these are all things that you can keep down in a journal. And I'm sure your veterinarian will be happy to work with you through reviewing what you've written down um, to, to understanding what is actually causing the itch. And finally, it's very important to note that just like individual humans, animals' uh, immune system react very differently. So you can have one animal that reacts really well to a certain type of medication um, to, to treat their itch, um, and maybe not necessarily as well to another one. So treatment and um, outcome of treatment is very specific for different animals. Right. So uh, finally, the last thing that I'd like to, speak, to cover is um, ear conditions. So a lot of the time when you do have itchy dogs, apart from itchy paws, you also get itchy ears and dirty ears. So I just hope to equip you with some tips on how to treat, um, how to treat your dog's ear when you are cleaning and treating them with medication. So a very important factor when you are cleaning your pet's ears is to minimize stress. A lot of animals don't like being touched around their ear area because it is a very sensitive area, especially when you are trying to introduce cleaning solutions or medications, and they'll start wriggling as much as they can. So a key thing to do is to either be able to successfully restrain your dog or get somebody to help you to hold your dog still while you're cleaning his ears. It's important that you do this in a well-lit environment so you can inform your veterinarian if there is excessive buildup of any of the of the debris coming out of the ear, or if it happens to be very painful, this is something that uh, you can inform your veterinarian as well. And also, only clean as deep as your fingers can reach. So ear canals are very sensitive, and at the base of them, you have an eardrum. So by using your fingers, you're, you can ensure that you don't perforate the eardrum in the event that you clean too deeply. As I previously mentioned, please avoid using Q-tips when you're cleaning your dog's ears for two reasons. Apart from perforating the eardrum, you can also end up pushing the dirt and bacteria deeper into the ear, making it more inflamed. Um, don't attempt to clean your pet's ears if they're wriggling excessively. Um, there are vet many services or veterinary clinics that offer services to assist you in cleaning your dog's ears. So this is something that you can inquire with your veterinarian. And finally, don't share cleaning solutions between different pets uh, because this can facilitate the spread of ear infections between one pet and another. So with treating ears, always be sure to clean the nozzle of the medication before and after introducing it into your pet's ear. This just tries, this minimizes the excessive growth of uh, bacteria on the nozzle surface so you don't continue to reintroduce infection into your dog's ear. When your veterinarian advises that you keep an e-collar on, um, especially in ear infections, this is actually for the benefit of your dog. So I know it can be very, very frustrating um, as it sometimes gets in the way of your dog's eating. Um, and your dog is struggling when it went and wriggling around when it has it on. But ultimately, the e-collar or the cone that your veterinarian is advising you to put on prevents your dog from sustaining further injury to the ear. Because the ear is such a delicate surface, if you allow your dog to scratch at its ear, it can cause the blistering of the ear flap, which will in turn then result in you potentially requiring surgery and then an even longer duration of keeping the cone on. Finally, follow your vet's instructions when, for the duration of treatment um, when treating your dog's ear, and this will help to reduce the reoccurrence of the infection. And finally, let your dog know if there has, uh, let's, apologies. <laughs> I haven't had my morning coffee. <laughs> Let your veterinarian know um, if you haven't seen an improvement in your dog's condition. And that means that if you aren't seeing an improvement, you may potentially be dealing with a resistant organism. And in that case, your veterinarian may advise you to do a further diagnostic workup, like culture and sensitivity testing. So don't use any leftover antibiotics. So if you've had a previous ear infection and you're thinking to treat this new one that you have with the same antibiotics, I advise against doing it, and that's just because you don't know for certain that the pathogen that you're dealing with is the same as the last one you used to have. Don't sporadically start and stop uh, using antibiotics on your ear when you are treating it. And don't share 
medications with between your different pets. For the same reason you would uh, share cleaning solutions, and that's because it can facilitate the spread from one pet to another. So I hope I have provided you with uh, some handy tips and tricks. Um, back to you, Olivia. Thank you, Surya, for that very informative presentation. I'm sure many of our viewers have found that useful. We have with us two other special guests today. They are Ms. Chowan and her dog, Sunday. Sunday, unfortunately, has some skin issues. So, uh, and Ms. Chowan has kindly offered to share some of her experiences with us as an owner. Shall we head over to meet them now? Sure, absolutely, let's go. Chowan, how are you guys doing today? Uh, I'm doing great, but for my dog, Sunday, maybe not so great. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Would you like to tell us more about his condition? Uh, yes. So, Sunday is five years old, and since young, he has been experiencing skin issues every now and then. Um, currently, he is on a salmon diet, and we did a food allergy test uh, recently. And our vet recommended that we introduce a new protein for him. That's what we did, and um, his skin did not... Uh, react very well to it. So immediately we stopped it and we reverted back to hypoallergenic kibbles for him. And so right now he is currently recovering. Okay. <laughs> yep. Nice to know. Um, I'm sorry to hear about his skin condition, but it's great to hear that you have some progress so far. Um, yeah, Dr. Surya, would you like to give us some of your insights? Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chilan, and look at this beautiful dog that you've brought in. So, Sunday, welcome to, the sh welcome to our webinar. Um, so, for the, the, for the purpose of today's webinar, I actually will not be diagnosing Sunday's skin condition. We are aware that Sunday is already seeing a vet, and their veterinarian has done a full workup and is in the process of treating his skin condition. So, I'll just be talking you through um, some of the different things that veterinarians look for when they are dealing with... Um, a pet with skin conditions. So the first thing uh, is obviously to take a very thorough history. So we know that um, Chowan has already shared that Sunday does have a allergic skin condition and that she is currently treating him with different medication. Um, so I'll, I'll take it from the physical exam point after the veterinarian has collected all the information, okay? So let's have a look at Sunday here. We can see that Sunday doesn't necessarily like being handled around his head and that's perfectly normal. It's quite normal for a dog. Um, we start by looking at his ears. So you can see here that his ears appear to be quite red and inflamed, and that is typical of a dog that is dealing with an, uh, an ear infection. And we can also see slight thickening of the inner side of the ear pinnae, which suggests that this ear condition is, is something that your dog has been dealing with for a long period of time. The other thing that we can note is that there is some crusting and yellow discharge from the ear. Um, and this is also quite typical of dogs that are suffering from allergic skin conditions. I mean, I need All right. <laughs> okay. Just taking a visual look at the um, at Sunday's face, we can see. <laughs> okay. All right. Just taking a look at Sunday's face. Our model here is not cooperating, <laughs> but you can. Very good. Um, so I won't, I won't bug him too much, but if you just take a look at his face, you can observe around his eye area that there is a slight discoloration around the eyelids and also a little bit of inflammation. This is on, can be noted on both sides of the head, um, on both eyes, and that's because allergic skin conditions do cause your pet to have very itchy, um, a very itchy face. So they will be rubbing it against different surfaces to try and alleviate that itch which really reiterates the purpose of why um, symptomatic relief for itchy skin conditions is so important. The other thing, because of his breed, that we can expect Sunday to have is he does have these intricate folds around his face, and that produces a very humid and moist environment for environmental, for bacterial growth um, surrounding his face. So we, can, we anticipate that in, in the course of his itchy skin condition, he will be rubbing his face <laughs> on a lot of different surfaces. Now, okay, perfect. We'll start here then. <laughs> so, <laughs> our model has decided to show the side of his body. Um, and here you can, you can see that there is some inconsistency in the coat. Um, there are some little patches which indicate small lesions or, or um, rashes that, that Sunday has been scratching. And finally, if we look at his feet, 
we can also see, sorry, sweetheart. Yeah. We can also see that Sunday has been chewing at his feet. Um, so he's probably in the middle of a flare up of his allergic skin condition. So Chowen, do you mind sharing with us a little bit about how you are currently um, taking care of Sunday in relation to uh, uh, his maintaining his skin condition? Right. So uh, for Sunday, uh, we tend to bathe him regularly with medicated shampoo, especially when he has his flare-ups. We also send him to uh, our vet to get a cytopoint injection sure. so to manage so that he doesn't itch as much. Okay. And also since, as you have mentioned, that he uh, chews on his paws very frequently. So whenever he has his baths, we also uh, make sure he has uh, Epsom feet soak okay. so that, you know, it alleviates uh, his itch a little. Oh, oh, great. Okay, so these are all really good ways to control your dog's itch. This is great for taking a different, like, multifaceted approach to making your dog feel more comfortable when he is suffering from an itchy skin condition. So the medication that Sunday is on is a non-steroidal anti-itch medication. This is something um, that you have elected uh, at, due to the convenience because it is a once-monthly once injection. However, different skin, uh, sorry, different itch medications do affect dogs differently, which means that something that may be very effective for Sunday may not necessarily be very effective for your own dog, uh, which is why it's very important to open, have open communication channels with your veterinarian and let them know if you feel like your skin condition isn't or the itch from your skin condition isn't being treated effectively. The other thing that Chowan has mentioned is that she's doing regular baths for her dog. This is a great way, so medicated baths are a great way to help um, soothe any inflammation on the skin. And this is something that can be considered when you have a very itchy dog. So the frequency of the baths and how you dilute your medicated solution is something that you want to speak to your veterinarian about, as sometimes over-treating it or too frequent bathing may dry out the skin, or uh, too infrequent bathing may not be effective enough. So keeping a diary or even photographing your dog's skin condition is a really effective way of keeping track of whether or not what you're doing has actually been effective. For dogs that suffer from really itchy paws, one of the things that um, you can uh, try in relation to medicated shampoo is just to, to uh, provide a foot bath for your, for your dog's um, itchy paws. So as uh, Cho Wan had said before, she does an Epsom salt uh, foot bath to help alleviate the itch. And you can use any other medicated shampoo uh, that's been recommended to you by your veterinarian. So um, once your pet has been uh, looked at quite thoroughly in the process of a clinic clinical exam from your veterinarian, they will then suggest a specific diagnostic tests in order to rule in, in or out the different factors as we had discussed previously in the presentation. So from there, you begin your process of uh, working out what is the inciting or the primary cause of your dog's itch. So for now, I will pass you back to Olivia. Nice. <laughs> that was really helpful, Dr. Surya. Thank Would you, you like to tell us how you've been coping with giving these uh, medications and taking care of Sunday? Right. So for Sunday, whenever we go for walks, we'll make sure that his paws are clean, his face is clean, his body is clean. We'll just do a very thorough wipe down. And um, also, we do have to check for ticks or any bugs uh, yeah. whenever we go for walks. And um, other than that, um, at night, uh, if he starts itching, we'll actually give him a... Uh, uh, cushion yep. <laughs> so that he doesn't uh, scratch too much, especially his ears, as uh, his ears are quite delicate. Yes, right? of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So other than that, uh, we just make sure that uh, he stays. He doesn't. Uh, he stays in the aircon room, so that it doesn't get too humid for him. Of course. Yeah. So that's pretty much what we do on a regular basis. Oh, that's very nice to hear. Very lucky of Sunday to have you guys caring for him. Very committed owners. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also really good how you mentioned you wash their paws after you come home because some of the environmental allergens do contact the paw surfaces. So getting rid of these would help him reduce the itch and the likelihood of getting any allergic reactions. Mm, would you like to add on anything or ask us any questions? Uh, so, of course, um, previously I did do a food allergy test for him um, because he does have flare-ups every now and then and we're actually not very sure even now uh, what kind of, uh, what, what's the reason actually behind uh, all of his skin flare-ups. It could be something else as well. Sure. Yeah, so uh, is there anything that you can share with me that I can take in the future? 
Sure. I think you have more experience in this area. Go ahead. <laughs> sure. Um, so as I previously said, allergic skin conditions can be very difficult to get to the bottom of. That's because they can, there may not necessarily be one, one inciting cause for what's making Sunday itch. So apart from food, it's very likely that he may also have some environmental allergen that's causing his skin to flare up. Coupled with the humidity that we have in Singapore, um, these things are very, very, very common. So uh, the important thing to bear in mind as a pet owner is the quality of life that Sunday has. So while the overall objective would be to try and identify what is causing the itch, if it's one thing or if it's many things, I feel we should really focus our importance on keeping Sunday comfortable. And I'm sure that you worked through um, that with your veterinarian and, and as you had mentioned previously, all the care that you provide him at home. So one of the things that you can consider down the line is um, if your veterinarian has recommended potentially a different allergy test um, or just focus on keeping him comfortable. So making sure that all his itch, um, his itch, uh, his symptoms of itch are sufficiently treated. Yeah. That's really good. Thanks for coming again, one, uh, Cho Wan and Sunday. We hope you enjoyed the session <laughs> and we really enjoy having you here. Thank you. So now let's move on to the next segment where we'll be answering some of the questions you have sent us. All right, so we're now back with the questions. So just to start off as a non-question thing, Charlotte Tan says, good morning. Good morning, Charlotte Tan. <laughs> very nice to have this opening very good. So <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Our next question is, sorry. If I wash my dog's face, will water get into its eyes? Will closing its eyelids completely prevent water from going in? Um, so this question comes from uh, Lemon Law. Um, I am, <laughs> apologies, in relation to the question, I'm trying to understand um, whether or not you, you are closing your dog's eye or your dog is closing his own eye. But for the purpose of answering your, your question, um, your dog will react to water by closing its eye and just making sure that you don't introduce, when you are washing your dog's face, that you don't end up introducing any um, uh, harmful substances. So if you're washing your dog's face, I would recommend just using plain water rather than using anything that contains soap, as this might be stinging to your dog's face and you really don't want to aggravate the eye area. So even though your dog does respond in, in the way of closing its eye, it's best to be prudent and just make sure that you don't get any of those chemicals in your dog's, um, in your dog's eye area. That's great. great. Thank you. Our next question is from Nico Yo. She asks, Hello, can my dog that has a diagnosed skin problem interact with other dogs? Oh, okay, that's a fantastic question and that's something that a lot of pet owners want to know about. So the, the, my first piece of advice is to take your dog to a veterinarian to understand what type of skin condition you're dealing with. If you're dealing with something like an allergy, um, that is not something that can be transmitted from one dog to another. However, if your veterinarian does diagnose a potentially uh, trans, uh, transmissible infection, something like uh, ringworm or different type of bacterial infection that can spread between pets, then I would recommend at this stage um, to keep your, your pet away from other animals until the, the, the infection has been fully resolved. But again, it's really, really important that you go have an open conversation and speak to your veterinarian about this so they can address any of your uh, concerns. That's great. Gui Ming Wayne asks, hey, Dr. Surya, I have a dog with floppy ears. After showering, she seems to have itchy ears. Try cleaning her ears often and we see yellow or brown colored discharge. How do we best avoid this? Oh, great. Um, thank you so much for the question, Wayne. And this is, uh, I'm sure, a, quest, uh, a concern that many different dog owners deal with. So certain dogs are predisposed to having ear conditions. Um, and that actually does have to do with the structure of their ears. So floppy dogs, uh, floppy dogs, floppy ears <laughs> on dogs, <laughs> apologies, is something that actually increases the humidity within the ear canal. So this means that it's really conducive for bacterial growth. 
um, and it does require regular cleaning. So Wayne, if you are uh, cleaning your dog's ears often and you are seeing yellow or brown discharge um, more excessive than you usually would, then I would really recommend taking your, your dog to see your um, primary veterinarian so that they can diagnose if there is an ongoing ear infection or whether or not your dog just requires more regular ear cleaning. Thank right. you for that. We have another question from Chu Mei Kwan. I washed his paws too after his walk, but the skin area between his paws tend to be very red. So I'm guessing that their dog has had skin issues or is having skin issues and has very red inflamed skin around the paw area. And um, I guess even though they wash the paws after walks, it's still very red. red so what should they do? Okay. Um, uh, so this is a great question, and this is something that I'm sure that a lot of, of pet owners that do have allergic dogs that chew their feet are dealing with. With itchy paws, there are two different things to consider. One is the structure of the paw. So if you happen to have a dog with very short fur coat, um, it could be that uh, when they are, when you do take them out for walks and runs, that the, the, the coarseness of the fur actually does result in aggravating um, the, the paw. The other thing, obviously, is contact dermatitis with the grass. That can cause um, itchy flare-up of the paw and also other, other types of allergies. So even though you are uh, washing uh, your dog's paw, it may not necessarily result to full treatment or cure of your dog's paw condition. One of the things that I would recommend is consider uh, giving your dog a foot bath, so soaking it um, in medicated shampoo. And a lot of the time, these medicated shampoos can help to alleviate the itch and reduce the redness. That's great. We have a long question for the next one, but I think it's something that many people would be wanting to know. So Ryan Cole asks, says, Hi Doc, I have a rescue that has skin issue. When it heals, the skin gets dry, and when she scratches the skin, it breaks and bleeds. And the process just goes on and on. Her itch used to be all over the body, but now it's just improved to just her chin and around her snout, which can be tricky to use medicated shampoo on. She is on Epoquel at the moment, but this is an ongoing problem. Any recommendations, next step forward? Um, great, that's a, that's a great question, Ryan. And um, it's really lovely to see that you've, you've gone out and, and been very dedicated to take care of your pet and resolve um, your pet's skin condition. So in relation to the use of medicated shampoo, as I had previously mentioned, you really don't want to get it around the eye area. However, if you do want to tailor treatment, um, you can always consider using a, a soft, a small cotton ball and dabbing along the area. Just ensure that after you have placed the medicated shampoo that you actually do rinse it off quite thoroughly. Another thing to keep to bear in mind with itchy dogs that do itch around the face and the snout is that they do have lip folds um, on either side of their face. And those are areas that can uh, develop a lot of moisture and exacerbate the itch. In relation to, um, it, it's great to see that you have been, you've put her on non-steroidal anti-itch medication. However, I would recommend that if you don't feel this is something that is necessarily improving over time, that you speak to your veterinarian about potentially um, providing additional itch relief to your, to your dog if you find that what you're de doing right now isn't necessarily working. So yes, advise. Um, seek additional uh, advice from your veterinarian as, as she's been dealing with your dog for longer. Fantastic. Our next question is from Belinda Soul. She asks, I've been dealing with my dog's allergies since I got him last June. He has been astray for nine years, so I'm not sure about his skin condition before. He has been on Epoquel for a long time now, and I wanted to know if there are any things I should look out for that will indicate his infection is getting worse. Um, okay, great. Thank you for your question, Belinda. So from what I understand, uh, you are, uh, you have a, a dog with a skin condition that's currently on Apoquel, and you wanted to know if there's anything that you should look out for to indicate whether or not his infection is getting worse. So the first thing that you need to work through with your veterinarian is the current state of the, of the skin condition. If your veterinarian has taken a look at your dog and gauged that, you know, your dog's skin actually looks fine, there's no current outbreak, um, we're not seeing excessive inflammation, then there may not be any justification to change your medication or change the, the treatment of your dog's skin condition. However, if you feel that your dog is not receiving sufficient um, symptomatic relief or you feel that your current medication at this point in time is not being effective to, to, to treat your dog's skin condition, 
do have a further discussion with your veterinarian so they can attend to your dog's issue and more um, attention. Great. Nice. Now, another question from Gray Yo. Oh, cute. My dog is a tripod and he uses his front two feet paws more than his one hind paw. This resulted in his front two paw pads thickening. Is that normal and to be expected? Um, uh, great question, Gray. So um, this is, in fact, something that you can see. Just like in humans, the more that we, we, we go around barefoot, the, the, the thicker we can expect our soles to, to become. And this is exactly what you can expect to see um, in your dog. So you can see uh, that if the, the front paws are thickening, as long as you're not seeing any inflammation, no signs of excessive itching, I would say that that um, is normal. However, if you are seeing anything that you are particularly concerned about, um, such as pain or inflammation, please take your dog to see a veterinarian so they can diagnose it appropriately. Amazing. So our next two questions will be on yeast infections. First, it's a question by Maybelline Chow, and she asked, can you share how to treat yeast infections? Okay. So yeast infections are very common in dogs. Um, and in Singapore, we tend to see a higher proportion of yeast infection due to the climate and the humidity. So as I'd previously mentioned, yeast, such as Malassezia, is a, um, it can be a component of a healthy dog skin microbiome. However, when it overgrows, that's when it does cause an itchy infection. When you take your dog to see a veterinarian, it's very likely that your veterinarian may recommend um, additional diagnostic workup in relation to the skin to the yeast condition. This will allow your veterinarian to select the appropriate antifungals for treating this. In the event that your dog's yeast condition is very mild, your vet may even uh, prescribe a uh, topical treatment, so a medicated bath to help control the, the the population of yeast on your dog's skin. Alternatively. If your dog is suffering from a severe yeast infection, your vet may even recommend antifungals. So those are uh, one of the two ways that, that yeast conditions can be treated in dogs. Now to follow up that question, Jasmine Low asks, can yeast infections be prevented? Uh, thanks. That's a great question, Jasmine. So this is a very tricky, um, a, a tricky uh, question in the sense that, as I had previously mentioned, yeast exists naturally on your dog's skin. So uh, in relation to prevention, the best way to go about it is to ensure that your, dog, uh, your dog's immune system is, is, is strong. And this is done by uh, having a good balanced diet if your dog doesn't have any allergies and also ensuring that your dog gets sufficient exercise. Um, otherwise, generally, yeast on the dog's skin can be controlled by your dog's own immune system. That's a great answer. Now we have a question from Wendy Lee. Why is my dog rubbing his face on the floor consistently right after the shower? How can we stop him from doing this? <laughs> okay, Wendy, that's, that's a great question because my dog does that too. Um, and uh, that actually, it really depends. Um, not having seen your dog, I can't accurately say whether or not your dog is suffering from a skin condition. In certain cases, dogs can rub their, their snaps on the floor after a shower, and that is to get the, the water out of their eye or if the water has tracked up their nose. They do it to, to dry up the area and because it is quite uncomfortable after a shower. Mm -hmm. However, if you feel that your dog is rubbing its face excessively on the floor or on different surfaces and you suspect bringing this up with your veterinarian so that they can properly diagnose um, any potential skin condition that your, do your dog may have. Thanks, yeah. Iria. Our next question is from Mildred Ng. She asks, recently we noticed our dog has brown patches all over his skin. Why is that? Okay, that's a, a great question, Mildred. So um, again, uh, brown patches can occur, uh, they may be suggestive of a skin condition. And with not having, um, being able to take a look at your, your, your dog's skin, I wouldn't necessarily be able to uh, diagnose what the skin condition is. However, what I would recommend is if you have a sudden onset of discoloration on your dog's coat, that that would warrant a, a trip to your veterinarian so that your veterinarian can appropriately diagnose the condition. Amazing. Um, we have this question from Noor Hafiza, and she asks, hello, can I ask? I, um, will a dog's skin disease spread to humans if we are in close contact with him? Thank you. Um, great. Uh, yes, you can ask. <laughs> so uh, that's a, another great question. Um, as I previously mentioned in relation to infectious skin diseases, 
the first step is to get a diagnosis from your vet, what it is you're actually dealing with. So something like an allergy or fleas is not something that you can necessarily get from your dog. However, if your dog has something infectious like ringworm or a bacterial infection um, that your veterinarian has indicated may be zoonotic, so it means that it can spread from animals to humans, then that is something that, that you can get if you are in close contact. And in the event that your pet does have this sort of infection, it, it's really important to take the precautions to ensure that you always maintain good hygiene after handling your pet um, and that you regular clean, regularly clean your pet's living spaces. Nice. Martina Moy now asks, Hi, does excessive paw licking contribute to skin problems on the paws and the paw pets? How do I stop my dog from licking her paws? Okay. Um, great. So that's a question that a lot of, uh, of dog owners um, struggle with. How do we stop the dogs from licking? Because a lot of the time what your dog will do is when you're not looking, may not lick. And then as soon as you turn away, they start chewing at their paws. So, um, if your dog is licking insistently at its paw, it is an indication that your dog is uh, suffering from some sort of skin condition. And this is something that you do need to get diagnosed by your veterinarian. Now, in relation to preventing your dog from licking at its paws, um, a lot of the time your veterinarian may suggest that you keep an e-collar on your dog. And this is just so that you prevent your dog from traumatizing the wound site. When your dog is given access to licking at the wound site, it does create a lot of moisture and bacterial growth. And in some cases, dogs even chew through their feet, and that can lead to secondary infections or actually limping or, and pain related to, to chewing of the paws. So um, what I would recommend you would do, Martina, is just to take your dog to see a veterinarian. Um, and once that's been diagnosed, if your vet does recommend putting on a uh, e-collar for the process of treatment, that you stick to it so that we can get on top of your dog's skin condition early. <laughs> nice. Uh, we now have a question from Daniel Lake. He asked, can washing of PP solution good for itch? Um, you... uh, apologies, I'm, I'm not familiar with, <laughs> with what PP solution is. Maybe you would like to clarify question. it, but yeah. uh, we will go on to the next question by Bertrand Chien. My dog has environmental allergies and has, and has gotten a cytopoint shot, which only lasted one month. His itch came back slowly, and it's too costly to have him get another cytopoint monthly. Will allergic immunity booster pills work in this case, or is there other options? Okay, so um, Bertrand, that's a, a, a great question, and this is something that, that I'm sure a lot of pet owners with allergic, uh, with dogs that have allergic skin condition uh, struggle with. The um, injection that, that uh, Bertrand is giving his, his dog is a non-steroidal anti-itch medication. It does only last one month, and in a lot of cases, um, depending on individual dogs, you can have dogs that uh, the effect of this anti-itch injection lasts longer than one month, but in a lot of cases, it can last less than 21 days. Um, in relation to getting a alternative uh, to these injections, one of the things that I would consider is having a chat with your veterinarian and just having that open discussion about it being too costly. There are other um, affordable alternatives to treating your dog's condition that doesn't have to be as expensive. In relation to um, allergic immunity booster pills, um, I, I don't think I, I would be able to, to comment on whether or not they've worked. Um, as generally being a veterinarian, a lot of the time what we recommend um, is uh, pharmacological, medical-based um, uh, medication. However, um, if you are keeping your dog's immunity up to scratch and you are ensuring that you know, they are getting a, a, a good and balanced diet with lots of exercise, that can definitely help with your dog's immunity. Whether or not it helps with the allergy, uh, time will tell. <laughs> Very nice. So Charlotte Tan now asks, my dog seems to have the same condition as the dog just now. Should I bring to the vet or can I self-treat? Um, okay, Charlotte. So this is in relation to uh, Sunday skin condition. As we had mentioned previously, Sunday is actually seeing a vet and he's getting his skin condition treated. Um, one of the things that I would recommend is in order to determine definitively that you are actually suffering from, well, your dog is actually suffering from the same condition as Sunday, is to take your dog to see a veterinarian. The thing about skin issues is they can all present as very similar. They can all look 
um, the same, but the inciting cause or what the primary cause of the itch is may differ. So that's when you really do need a veterinarian to step in and do those diagnostic tests so you can get to the bottom of what is actually uh, going on with your dog in the first place. Yeah. Thank you. Jessica Gunn now asks, Hi, I have a poodle with skin issues. He's already on medication. There are black spots on his belly. May I ask if there is anything alarming and what can I do? Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, it, it's it, great that you have taken your poodle to see a veterinarian and that you are treating, um, you're treating uh, your dog's skin condition with medication. Um, in relation to the black spots in his belly, so this is, a, this is a little bit subjective. Unfortunately, I can't comment on whether or not this is perfectly normal or something that um, you need uh, treated. So what I would recommend is take it to your regular veterinarian to have a look, and then your vet will be able to advise you from there what you should do in relation to the dark spots. Yeah. So we have an update from Daniel Lick just now. Can washing um, of per potassium permanganate solution, I'm guessing he's asking, is washing feet or the body with per potassium permanganate good for itch? Um, I think in relation to treating your dog's itch, I would stick to um, sort of uh, veteran, more veterinary grade um, um, topical solution. So in relation to using potassium permanganate on your dog, it really depends on what exactly you're trying to treat. So from here, I would uh, suggest actually having a chat with your veterinarian. If your dog is suffering from something like a flea allergy, um, by not treating the flea allergy and just opting to just do uh, a medicated bathing, your dog may still end up, um, um, your dog's itch may still be prominent. So what I would recommend is to, uh, to, to get this checked out with your veterinarian and they can uh, prescribe for you a medicated solution that would be effective in treating your dog's itch. All right, thanks. Now moving on to the next question we have by Catherine Tan. My dog has white pimples on its skin. How to remove the pimples? Okay, um, so uh, thanks for the question, Catherine. What I would recommend, um, again, is it really depends on, on the severity of, of what you're dealing with. If you're dealing with one small um, papule or what looks like a pimple, you could watch it. Um, uh, however, if you are dealing with a condition in which you are seeing many of these spots, um, I would recommend taking your dog to a veterinarian so they can properly treat it with the medication that it requires. However, do not attempt <laughs> to um, pick at or um, burst any of these white pimples that you see on your dog as it can be very, very painful. Yeah. Great. Now, Charity asks, hello there. Can we do anything as dog owners to prevent skin diseases in our dogs in the first place? Thanks. Um, okay, that's, that's a great question, Cheryl. And, and actually, um, it's a very valid question because preventing skin diseases in your dog uh, is something that, that, you know, some dogs actually have a very good immune system and they don't require it. So from birth, um, there are certain things like genetics that affect your dog's skin. So if your dog is predisposed to having skin conditions, unfortunately, there's not much you can do in the way of preventing it from happening. Um, however, you can treat it if it happens. If you have a dog that doesn't have ongoing skin conditions or isn't suffering from um, it, an itchy skin condition at the moment, there's not anything necessarily preventative that, that, that you can do to, to prevent future onset. However, um, as I previously mentioned, just ensuring that your dog's immune system stays up to scratch with, with a balanced diet and exercise um, is really important. Yeah. Okay. Next question is by Petty Lim. My Maltese has dry, rough patches near joint areas. What can I apply on it? Um, thank you for the question. So, Penny, again, um, because I'm not able to really have a look at your dog uh, and diagnose your dog's skin condition, what I would recommend is to take your dog to see a veterinarian so that they can um, identify what exactly those dry, rough patches are, if they are really just dry, rough patches, or if there may be something else that's causing that area to be uh, rough. Um, and then your veterinarian will be able to advise you from there what you can apply onto the skin to, to alleviate uh, the symptoms that your, your dog is suffering from. Amazing. Next question by Ryan Cole. Does gut health contribute to dog immunity? Will increase a dog probiotic help? So will giving probiotics to our pet dogs help? Okay. Um, 
So there has been a lot of research in relation to uh, animal immunity. And in a lot of cases, before they move on to doing studies on humans, there are a lot of animal trials that, that occur in, in research. So um, as it stands now, we do know that having good gut immunity in humans is something that contributes to good overall immunity. Um, so this is very similar to what your dog would ex experience. And that is also something that, that has to do with the healthy diet. So if your dog has good, good um, gut microbiome, um, we do know that that will actually play a role in boosting your dog's immunity. Yeah. That's great. Our next question is pretty long. It's by DM Neil. It says, hi, good morning. I have a poodle that likes to scratch between the neck and jaw area. He has seen many vets and they couldn't find any skin issues as there is no rash nor fur loss. He also likes to lick his paws. His diet is freeze-dried patties and lamb or beef and home-cooked minced pork with veggies. Uh, he starts scratching again once the jab cytopoint wears off after three months. What would you suggest that I do next? Um, okay, uh, so thank you for your question and thanks for providing the detail in relation to um, to what your dog is, is suffering from. Um, it's great to see that you are treating your dog's itch uh, with um, a non-steroidal anti-itch medication. In relation to what you, you should do about your dog, the idea is um, with certain allergies, they can be very complicated. So if you do want to further the testing or further the get a better understanding of whether or not your dog is dealing with a potential environmental allergy or um, or a different a food allergy, I would recommend speaking to your veterinarian about it and speaking to your veterinarian about what other tests you can do in relation to intradermal skin testing um, or serology just to understand whether or not your skin, your dog's skin condition is caused by an external allergen. In both cases, even if you do get a diagnosis, unfortunately, you won't be able to eliminate environmental allergens. Things like pollen in the air and dust mite is not anything that you can stop from, from affecting your dog. So you are actually on the right track right now by just treating your dog's discomfort and itch um, with those three monthly injections. Yeah. All right, we have time for one last question for today. And the question is by Zhi Jun Tian. Hi, my puppy has itchy red lesions that appear and subside on his belly region, but he does not have itchy paws. Could this still be contact dermatitis? We, put, we do put coconut oil to try to alleviate his itch, but it seems to have little effect. Okay, great. Um, so uh, the, the first thing I would probably recommend is to take your puppy to see a veterinarian. Um, this will allow your vet to um, properly diagnose this thing. However, it's great that you have noted that, that the, the itch is really in one region. And so this is very important. Every time you go into a veterinary uh, clinic and you have your consultation, this is the type of detail that you need to tell your veterinarian. Um, my, vet, my dog, for example, as you had said, is only itching on its belly region. And your vet may follow up with asking particular questions, like where does your dog lie? Has there been any change in um, your household cleaning products? Um, Alternatively, it may be something completely different that is causing the itch. So it's very, very important to get a proper diagnosis done by your veterinarian. Thanks so much, Surya. <laughs> we have now come to the end of our webinar. Thank you once again for your kind attention and active participation. If there are any questions we have not managed to go through, we'll get back to you on the Facebook page. So see you next time. See Bye. <laughs>